How are you, Restorative Family? Here with Dr. Mike, Dr. Ash, and we're going to be talking about something that is very pertinent to this time of year in the spring in particular, because this is where we start to see it the most. And it is something called Mast Cell Activation Syndrome, or MCAS. And it's something that is not well understood, not looked at typically, and is oftentimes just glossed over. And a lot of this has been getting brought into the limelight more by uh, different groups of docs out there. One in particular, Dr. Lawrence Afrin, is kind of thought of and, and re regarded as one of the leaders in investigating, researching, and treating this sort of a condition. And I've got a book of his right here called Never Bet Against Oakum, and it's the, that whole principle of Oakum's razor that sometimes in very complex cases, the simplest or one piece is what is tying it all together. And so we're going to chat a little bit about what MCAS is, what someone might be experiencing with that, and then we're going to follow up with another video here that you're going to want to check out talking all about what we do to support that person who might be struggling with a suspected MCAS diagnosis. Okay? So... Let's go. That's good. Let's do I, it. I think it's important, to, obviously, this time of the year when, when we get into spring, welcome to spring, right? Mm -hmm. um, how many times have people gone to their doctor with a, a little bit of a runny nose, some sneezing, and maybe a, a mild rash, and the doctor says, oh, it's just allergies, okay? It's just allergies. Go take some Benadryl. Go take one of these other medicines that you can buy over the counter, uh, and it may palliate you for a little bit, but it doesn't answer the whole picture because there's a lot more to mast cells than just what's going on up in here. And there's a lot more to triggers for mast cell activation than just pollen out there in, in the atmosphere, et cetera. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So, so what the heck is a mast cell, right? Okay. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know, it, it's interesting. There are so many amazing units and subunits and cells inside the body. So to, to start that... Um, walk down medicine and hearing all these things and right now we've had so many things with with coronavirus and you know an antigen hitting an antibody and triggering antibody responses down the road so mast cells are these specialized cells that line the respiratory tract okay all the way down into the lungs not just up in the nose they also line the gastrointestinal tract from you know the esophagus through the stomach and down into the intestines you can also find mast cells inside of areas uh, like the, the heart, uh, tissue, muscle tissues, etc. So what are they? they? They are cells that contain a whole bunch of granules inside of them. And, and these granules, when they get activated, and we'll talk about those in a second, release all kinds of enzymes that can break things down and they also release histamine, okay? So that's why so many times when you go to see your doctor, you know, the only thing in their armamentarium is to go and say, oh, it's just allergies, go take an antihistamine, because you're blocking some of that extra histamine that's being produced when these mast cells degranulate, as is the, technically the term for it, too. But it's also releasing all these other enzymes that then start to cascade and cause other local inflammatory reactions. And so it's important to recognize that not all that sneezes is allergies. It's, it's more than that, and especially when we're talking about mast cells. One of the classic ones for, for mast cell activation is, is a bee sting, okay? If you've ever had someone that, that said that they had an anaphylactic reaction, so anaphylaxis is a little bit different than just a true allergy, it's basically when somebody gets exposed to that hymenoptera sting, okay, it causes a local reaction in the muscle, and then it starts to go systemic. So not only do you have the rash that happens and pops up, you start to feel your heart race because your blood pressure is dropping, your tongue swells. That's that cascade that we're starting to talk about with this. So that's a mast cell activation secondary to that type of a bee sting. But there's a lot of other things that can do that. And we'll be able to see how some of those triggers affect you based on the multitude of symptoms that can happen with mast cell activation. So it's not just your runny, uh, runny nose, what we call rhinorrhea, uh, sneezing, itchy, watery eyes. You can get headaches with this kind of thing. You know, it's very common to have gastrointestinal upset. 
um, acid reflux. Uh, there happens to be H1 receptors inside the lining of the stomach uh, that actually can get triggered when the mast cells get stimulated. Yeah. Diarrhea, because your body is trying to flush all this stuff out with these extra enzymes. Muscle aches, cramping, and of course the dermatologic manifestations are, are huge. So there's all kinds of different rashes that can happen, not just your classic urticaria. There's a subset called urticaria pigmentosa that happens with a very, very, very rare condition called primary mastocytosis. We're not even going to talk about that because it's too rare, okay? But any of these different types of, of rashes that can pop up then linger. It's one thing to get a, a transient, short, hot flush rash that might be hormonal, although hormones can trigger those too, okay? Um, but it's different to actually have something that will last for hours uh, and, and cause not just itching, but discomfort, etc. Et with everything. So when you talk about the triggers, you can see how some of those uh, locations and see how some of those symptoms can happen as well with it. So it's not just that basic allergies that your doctor told you about, too. I think it's important to realize, too, that people with MCAS have oftentimes very complex symptomatology and ongoing chronic issues. Sometimes these are the people that don't feel heard or understand by their doc understood by their doctors. They might feel or have been told it's all in your head. Um, so this may be, if you find yourself in that scenario, this may be sort of the explanation to some of these symptoms that really haven't had an explanation in the past. So, you know, being a woman and somebody who helps a lot of women in, in practice, I also want to mention, you know, the, the symptoms of hormones. Um, you know, we see that PCOS and endometriosis can be tied to this chronic mast cell activation syndrome. We also know that there are a lot of mast cells in the central nervous system. So, you know, a lot of brain-based symptoms, um, anxiety, depression, are, can be traced back to this mast cell activation syndrome. So, wanted to mention those, you know, again, those are more the chronic symptoms, um, but there's a lot of symptoms that fall into this diagnosis, and when we're going to hash this all out on our blog, if, so if you want to, like, a really clear, concise symptom list that's rooted in the research, please check out our blog post on this. Yeah, so we're going to get on here in another video. Like I said, we're going to talk about how do we start to look for this? What do we start to do if we are finding and or pretty suspicious that this might be the simple unifying thread behind somebody's symptomatology? So make sure you check that video out. Thanks, guys. Thanks.